the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, they just held a news conference talking about the viral videos from over the weekend. Those videos from the Georgia, Florida game. Jacksonville Sheriff TK Waters says at least one of the officers in the videos has even received death threats over these videos. He says the viral cell phone video showing officers beating and using stun, gun, stun guns on people during the Georgia Florida game Saturday does not show the full story of what actually led to the arrest of four men. Arrest of judgment, whether it be in a criminal investigation or in a court of public opinion, can lead to serious errors in judgment. And such errors in judgment can have dangerous, potentially deadly consequences. So that was Sheriff TK Waters there addressing uh, what happened in those videos and also showing body cam video from his officers. We're going to also hear tonight from more fans who witnessed these incidents, but we want to turn things over now to Jeannie Blaylock and also our crime and safety analyst Ken Jefferson. And Ken and I have been sitting watching the press conference it's been going on now for about an hour now. Uh, Ken <laughs> served with JSO for 24 years. And we want to first point out that you said that you saw nothing illegal, you saw nothing against pro protocol. But let's walk through some of this video. First of all, Ken's explaining to us that resisting arrest does not have to mean that you touch the police officer. It can just be verbal. So let's listen to that Sorry. clip they just played. Remember I told you I'm either going to kill a cop or not leave. And I don't know if you can hear that, but he literally says, I'm going to kill, right? He said, I'm going to kill a cop. I'm going to kill a cop. He was resisting verbally because they were asking him to get up. He's being ejected, and he was resisting their commands to do that. So he's a totally defiant um, subject at this particular point, from the, actually from the get, very get-go. So the officers have to do <clears throat> what they have to do to, extra, to, to get him out of that seat and um, eject him from, from, the, um, from the stadium. Okay, so let's switch this video. This is kind of the <laughs> beginning of the incident. We're going to see here in a minute that what he does is, look, right there, you can see we're in the yellow circle. He mm -hmm. grabs the holster from the officer or tries to. So what does that mean? That changes the game entirely because if, he, if he's able to unholster that gun, he can do harm to other people as well as the officer. So the officer has to use whatever force is necessary, one, to get his hand off that gun to, re to, to retain his weapon, and two, to subdue this particular sub subject. It's not pretty. It's not supposed to look pretty. You're, you're, you're in a survival mode at that particular time because your life is at stake if that person was able to get his gun out of his holster. And we know that tens of millions of people have seen these viral videos. The one that seemed to get the most attention, the hottest one was when a police officer seemed to be just beating the yeah. pulp out of somebody else. So we're going to switch here to the other side of the stadium about an hour and a half, two hours later. That's what you don't see on the viral video. Ab absolutely. And I always say let's wait for the body cam video to tell the story. The cell phone cameras gets an angle. It, it doesn't get the up close and personal like the body cam video. This guy was actually bear hugging the officer. Actually, at one point, he had his hand in his face, which he could have gouged his eyes out, as you see right there. Uh, so the officer is doing whatever he can to get this subject off of him because he could do the officer harm as well. They're in an unbalanced situation on, on, on a staircase. Uh, nobody's uh, feet are, are, are safely planted on the ground. So what looks like he just may have pulled somebody out of the stand, stands and began to pummel him. Actually, he was getting this guy off of him because they tried numerous times to eject him out of, out of, the, uh, out of the stadium by verbal commands, telling them, you got to leave, you got to leave. And this guy wanted to argue with him along with two other persons. And then when he grabbed the officer, the fight was on. And you were pointing out to me that these are rather large fans. They're pretty big men, and they had to double handcuff them at some point. Yeah, you know, uh, the handcuffs are, are built to be um, fit closely to you, but they, because of the, the muscles in their arms, they had to use double handcuffs just to subdue them and, and, and to properly restrain them. Um, but this was an incident. Uh, you know, incidents happen all the time at, at these games, and we don't hear a whole lot about them. But as the sheriff said, there were 35 total incidents, and these were the only, only two that uh, was with incidents, you know, that, that resulted in violence from the other persons. So just in summary, again, you saw nothing that you thought was against protocol or illegal that no, JSO I, did. No, I, I, the officers, in my opinion, acted properly according to policy that I remember that they have in place right now. They did everything they can to protect the safety of the people around them as well as themselves. Well, Ken Jefferson, our crime and safety expert, we do appreciate your coming today and watching that news conference with us.